in a world where in 2021 people still think the most effective way to understand something is to randomly bombard someone with questions prior to investigation or any logical deduction whatsoever. Welcome to Clown World. So I'm going to answer basic flat earth questions. There's someone in my comments spamming me with the questions. I don't have time to go back and forth and answer every flat earth 101 day one question all day on Facebook when you could easily research this stuff if you actually wanted to know the truth. It's, it's actually pretty frustrating. But anyway, so the first question that this person is asking is, so are all the other planets flat? It's not even logical that it could be flat. The only thing that's illogical is to say that the Earth is a spinning cartoon ball in a vacuum where water bends for the first time in the history of mankind, adhering to the outside of a sphere as it spins and revolves around the sun that shoots through space 500,000 miles per hour, while the galaxy shoots 1.3 million miles per hour, and every single star for all recorded history resets over top of the Earth. Is the Earth, or what about the other planets, right? That's the question. Well, are the other planets flat? I actually answered the question, but... It, that, that's why I'm pretty, I don't know, aggravated because you asked the question again, right? So I need you to listen. No one thinks that all the other planets are flat, okay? For one, there isn't other planets. When you say other planet, you are presupposing the Earth is in fact a planet, which is the very thing we are discussing, right? That's the question. Is the Earth a spherical planet? That's called a begging the question fallacy. Just reasserting that something's true isn't real. You'll be all right as I take away your little globe earth religion that you were told about when you were five and you were given cartoons. This doesn't phase me at all. I'm, I'm literally not even phased by it. So anyway, the word planet, instead of typing, listen, okay? The word planet, the etymology for planet, listen. The etymology for planet is wanderer, okay? There are one, it's a wandering star. We document them all the time. I document them all the time. You can zoom in on them. They're pulsating orbs of light. They're not static, meaning still. You cannot in any way prove they're solid, terra firma, or spherical. Because you see the same thing every single day for all recorded history, a pulsating orb of light. Now, even if there were spheres in the sky, which there's literally no evidence for that, there's literally none that exists in the history of mankind. If they were spheres in the sky, that still wouldn't make the earth a ball. That's like walking up to someone's house and saying, look, there's a light bulb on the ceiling. That means that the floor is a light bulb. That's like walking in a bar, walking up to a pool table, grabbing a pool ball and saying, look, the pool ball is a sphere. That means the pool table is also a sphere, okay? The earth is provably not curving, which means it's flat. They said it's a certain size, right? So the radius value is the distance from the center to the edge of a circle or a sphere, right? Listen, please. They said that the Earth has a radius value of 3,959 miles. That means you have to see the curvature of the Earth at no further than 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height in feet. Okay, it has to curve at a certain rate. You can Google it yourself. Earth curve calculator. This is not flat, flat Earthers math. This is the globe Earth's models math. Okay, Google it. Earth curve calculator. I showed you a picture. We have mountains seen from 255 miles away. Listen, 255 miles away, and according to the globe earth math, the top of the mountain in the back should have been blocked by one mile of earth curvature. An entire mile of earth curvature should have been blocking the top of the mountain, yet you could see the top of the mountain with the entire mile of earth curvature missing. You can see the shoreline leading up to the mountain range. It's literally impossible. We have falsified the radius. It does not curve at the rate they said it did objectively. This is why it is censored by the government. This is why you ask questions like, oh, are we a disc in a other solar system planet with other spherical planets? Because there's something called the Flat Earth Society, where everything they say is wrong and stupid and not one Flat Earther thinks any of it. It's called misinformation. So they admitted in Congress they censor Flat Earth, yet they prop up Flat Earth Society, which is not really Flat Earth. It's all misinformation. That should automatically raise a red flag, if you're honest. What's on the other side? What's the other side? The deepest hole ever dug is 7.8 miles. It's called the borehole in Russia. No one can dig deeper than that, conveniently enough. It's very similar to the distance of the, low, the deepest location in the ocean, called the Mariana Trench. No one's ever dug deeper than eight miles. It's called the borehole in Russia. Now, whenever the globe Earth had predictions based on the supposed layers of this globe Earth, they were proven inaccurate the entire way down the entire eight miles. They couldn't even get the top eight miles correct with predictions, much less could they ever ad adequately predict 
4,000 miles to a core that doesn't exist that they still can't explain how it somehow creates a magnetic field because of the Curry point. And it's literally impossible, according to Stanford and Harvard and Yale and Princeton. They literally can't explain the magnetic field in 2021 on a globe Earth. Now, would you fall off the edge? These are like elementary first grade questions. And I'm, I'm being honest with you, right? You need to listen. You have been engineered to treat us as if we're stupid. But you should be honest. You know nothing about the conversation. You haven't diligently researched it. You've never measured it. You've never made a long distance observation and you know nothing about it. So when you ask these stupid questions like, can you fall off the flat earth? That is called a straw man fallacy, right? Because no one thinks that. So can you fall off the edge of a lake? Can you fall off the edge of a shore? Of course not. There's a shoreline, right? You can't fall off the edge of a pond. There's a shoreline, the water's contained. There's something called this. You need to just listen though. Right? Because this is so much information that you're going to have to learn for you to even get close to understanding the conversation. Stop trying to pretend you're going to make flat earthers look dumb because you look dumb when you do that. You ask questions like, do we, th so what is up with the other planets? If you knew what flat earth really said, you know that that's a very dumb question. If you say stuff like, can you fall off the edge? You would know that's a very dumb question. There's something called the 60th South Latitude, effectively a circle around you. It was signed in the Antarctic Treaty that it is illegal for you to privately and freely explore past this region. China, Russia, the United States have all signed it. It's the longest lasting peace treaty in modern history, okay? So all these geopolitical adversaries and enemies have all signed a treaty that says it's illegal for you to go explore past that area. So we cannot make claims what's past there because you can't go there to verify it. It's literally impossible and illegal, okay? The one thing that would prove the Earth's a ball is for one, measuring the curvature of the Earth never been done. In fact, the opposite's been done. Every measurement of the Earth ever assumes a flat Earth. And we have measurements way too far to be on a globe Earth, including lasers that were shot without getting hit by the curvature. You need to listen. If you can come up with a question you think that I can't answer, that doesn't make Make the Earth a ball. We falsified the globe Earth. It is not curving at a rate consistent with the radius value of 3,959 miles. This is why we are heavily censored. And I've been censored on every major platform and even PayPal and Venmo because they forcibly censored the real flat Earth by telling you the lies. So you should listen very carefully. We know that the Earth is the bottom of everything, okay? The basement, effectively, in layman terms. It's geocentric. That means the center of everything. It's stationary, of course, meaning not moving. It's a geocentric stationary plane. We have mountains, we have valleys, but it's a topographical plane. The sky resets like a perfect clock over top of us for all recorded history. It all goes around Polaris, the North Pole star, directly over the center of the surface of the Earth, which is the North Pole, and it resets perfectly for all recorded history for thousands of years doing the exact same thing. Literally impossible on a ball or spinning, revolving around the sun, shooting through space. This is why they said that the lights are actually thousands of light years away. Not because they went and measured something thousands of light years away, because they mathematically had to construct something consistent with the model and it necessitated they'd be that far away because the stars don't change like they would have to if you had all these different vectors going on. It's called parallax, okay? So you need to understand the true origins of this religion. And it is a religion, it's a belief system built upon the doctrine of men with no empirical evidence. The Big Bang Theory was literally proposed by a Catholic priest, a Jesuit priest proposed the Big Bang Theory. First time, oh, well, the perfect shape's a sphere, a metaphysical, ontological premise, philosophical. The perfect shape's a sphere, so the Earth must therefore, by deduction, be a sphere. Let's try to figure out a way to mathematically prove that it could be a sphere. That's literally where it started. It's literally a religion. We were all shown cartoons of it, and they told you there's no more land on the Earth, and there's nothing significant about you. You're on a tiny speck of dust in an ever-expanding universe where everything came from nothing, right? And the truth is that they have put us in a little circle, like a playpen, and they said, you're not allowed to go outside of there, you stupid little peasants. And there are people that are the peasants running around attacking the other people trying to wake them up and free them. First heard about Flat Earth, I thought it was dumb also. Then I humbled myself in research to try to prove the Earth was a globe and found out it is far from dumb. And if you're still on that wavelength, even though waves aren't things and don't have links, right? Just a transverse movement in a medium that has to be there, the antecedent to any type of propagation. But anyway, I digress, right? If you're not even on that wavelength of understanding that it isn't a dumb conversation, you're nowhere close to the truth. You're nowhere close to the truth. So just humble yourself, be honest, seek the truth diligently, and then you will be good to go, right? And people will be more than happy to help you answer your questions. They want you to come over here and know the truth. That's our whole thing. We want everyone to wake up and realize we've been lied to so we can get our power back. But just be respectful. Don't expect to be able to just hurl insults and attack people and that people are just gonna love you and be real nice and just keep letting you do it. 
Because the irony is that, you know, you're projecting your own intellectual insecurity. I go around the United States offering $100 cash to anyone in these major cities that can answer three basic questions about the globe Earth correctly, the basic questions about it, and no one ever wins the money. So be honest, you know nothing about it. It's okay. All the flat earthers know everything about it, right? So that's, you should be real here. Just look into it. There's your 